if you brought your Bible, go with me tonight to the book of, um, uh, let's just start in the book of Psalms, and uh, we'll go to chapter number 145. I'm believing God for what God has for us tonight. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, was, I was praying, and this was, this was coming to me, and I haven't preached on it for a while, but it is something that God's been stirring in my heart, really for a number of um, well, it started about, the first incident started about, oh, I'd have to go back and look, maybe two years ago, um, not the first time that God had ever used me this way, but of the more recent uh, common occurrences of this that I'm going to be preaching on tonight, it began a couple of years ago, we were in a Sunday morning service, and uh, there was a lady there who had been diagnosed with cancer, she had started coming to our church and uh, had been diagnosed with cancer, I think before she came, before she started coming. And she was diagnosed with cancer, and she was in, oh, at the time, I guess when she first came, maybe not quite the fourth stage yet, but she got real serious quickly at the fourth stage, um, or there are five stages, I guess, or something. But she's, she's in a condition, and she's skin and bones. Uh, it, was, it was almost hard to watch her walk in the service because she, she was very very weakened in her condition and so forth. But we're believing God with her. And one Sunday during praise and worship, the anointing came on me. And now, you, you know, you go to hell for lying, right? <laughs> but the anointing came on me and Jesus walked into the service. Jesus himself. I didn't see him with my physical eyes. But by, by word of knowledge, I could tell he's standing right here. And I just knew it. There's a, there's a certain presence that when it comes into the service, Jesus has come. It's much more holy, much more reverent. I learned that in Russia whenever I was with Dr. Dufresne. We were over there ministering, and he was, uh, actually it was Dr. Dufresne and Pastor Nancy, and one night Pastor Nancy was ministering. And at the end of the service, when Pastor Nancy was done, the atmosphere, you know, we all thank God for the presence that we have, the anointing that we have in our services, but this when that was in these meetings in Russia, but then all of a sudden it changed and you wanted to, you didn't want to say a word and you wanted to get on your knees and and bow yourself to the ground. There was something holy in the building. And at the time I was like, man, that changed. What was that? And we got out of the service later and, and Dr. Dufresne said to us, when that happens, Jesus came in the service. He said, I've been there a number of times. That's Jesus. Whenever that, ha- that holiness that, like that, that's Jesus. He, he himself came in the service. Well, um, we, this was in Russia now I'm talking about, but when we were in Russia, that, that particular time, we've been there before, but um, we were, we were uh, after that service, when that holiness came in, there was only one way for us ministers out, and in order to keep from being mobbed, we had to get out before everybody else did, so we had to get out of the service. But um, when we were walking out of the service, uh, there's this service, this auditorium was kind of on a, I don't know if it was, I guess it was second floor. It was like, a, maybe, maybe kind of like first floor, but it had a basement under it, maybe a better way to put it. And we had to go down some steps to get out of the auditorium. Out in, out in the foyer, go down some steps. We got out to the foyer and everybody's just, us ministers, there's Dr. Dufresne, Pastor Nancy, and I think maybe seven, I don't know, seven or 10 of us ministers, you think, honey? And, uh, and we're walking down those steps and my, I had a spiritual son with me that particular meeting. He's a pastor in Nigeria, um, Pastor Ike Akabogu and his wife. And he was with me at that meeting. And we were walking down those steps. And we're, as he took his first step off the his first step, he burst into tears, just weeping, just walking down those steps. Well, I, I wasn't sure what was happening. But he told us later, he said, I, I came down, took that first step and looked up, and Jesus is standing in the middle of the air right in front of me. And he's weeping, weeping. Now, Pastor Nancy had just preached on uh, worry. Excellent service on worry. And Jesus, in, the, in, in standing, looking at my spiritual son, the rest of us didn't see him. But, but he appeared to my spiritual son, and he's standing there in midair, and he's got tears streaming down his face. And he said, this, which was preached tonight, is the reason many of my children don't receive what I have for them. Yeah. And he's weeping, Pastor. Yeah. He's weeping. Jesus is weeping. Yeah. In other words, and, 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 and Pastor Ike saw that, and he, he broke out weeping 
because of the, the vision, but because of the longing that Jesus, the, the words that Jesus spoke had longing in yeah. them. He so longed to do so much more for his children. And that's the reason for the tears, just the longing to do so much more for his children. And he said, this is the reason why uh, more of my children don't receive, because of worry. Well, it quite impacted my spiritual son. And in the back room, after we got down the steps, there was another room there. We just, it, there was a move of God in the back room for, I don't know, honey, maybe 45 minutes or so. Just different things happening, the word of the Lord coming forth, a different, different direction. There's a lot, lot of experiences, things were happening. I believe in the word, of, the word of faith, and I believe in the move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 We're in the end time book of Acts That's days. Right. Right. Hallelujah. And so these things are not every day, you know, so you talk to somebody that says they see Jesus every day, watch out for them. That's not real. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Or, or, or they tell you they can walk down the street and go to heaven at the snap of their finger. They're false. That's not real. Yeah. But that doesn't mean these things don't happen. Right. Right. So, but we were, uh, I said that to say that when Jesus came into that service, I was talking to you about that. Remember, I was telling you about in our service, that lady that was diagnosed with fourth stage cancer. Whenever she was there that Sunday, whenever she, uh, during praise and worship, Jesus came and he stood like right not too far from me. And that same presence was yeah. on me. It w was on him. When I say that same presence, I mean that compassion. Yes, sir. Yeah. The compassion that was on him. And I knew what I was to do. I knew what he was there for. Now, I've not told this story in a whole lot of detail. Even my local church, I guess they're watching tonight and find out more details than they, they, they've ever heard. But, uh, but Jesus is standing beside me, and I knew I'm the minister to this lady with four-stage cancer. And uh, I know that he came to minister to her. But you see, we're the body of Christ. He does what he does through us. Amen. So I knew I needed to go down and minister to that lady. So I, I walked down there, and I told her to step out into the aisle. And the, the cloud that I stood in and the glory that I stood in and the compassion that I was moving with was not of me, Pastor. It was so beyond me, so beyond my ability to have mercy on somebody. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was divine. It was not sympathy. Sympathy is human. Compassion is divine. Sympathies of the emotions, compassion is of the spirits. Yes. And this compassion, which we're going to be talking about tonight, heals the sick. Amen. It's Amen. a flow of divine healing that God has used us in a number of times, and it's been picking up in the last number of months, Glory and it's begun to happen, Pastor, more and more, and I'm beginning to love it. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Glory to God. But this, this time that it's... It's happened in the past. I've had this experience in before. I'll tell you maybe some stories. But in more recent times, it started happening. That was the first time it happened in more recent times. I mean more recent. I mean the last five years or so. And, uh, that, uh, and from that time on, it's been happening more often. And uh, this particular lady, I was able to minister to her under that anointing. And I wasn't quite sure what all was going to happen. I mean, I knew I was to minister to her. And I knew I was to, uh, there were some things I was to say. And so I obeyed the Lord, and um, I was fully aware that the Lord stayed by her the rest of the service. And I was fully aware, now that you might say, well, I thought he's at the right hand of the Father. He is. But, but he's, he will appear to, to people in vision form in different ways. And so he, I, I was fully aware that not only did he stand by her the rest of that service, that he walked with her from that service. And, wa and walked with her, working with her yeah. as the author and the finisher yes, sir. Yes, sir. of her faith. Glory to God. God. And that woman walked that out and actually went down the death's door. And they really, doctors said, there's, there's nothing else. We've tried everything, nothing else. We've tried all that we know. We've tried these new things even. And there's nothing we've been able to do. She got down the death's door and all of a sudden turned around like that and was completely healed. Glory to God. Raised up off of a... Deathbed, really. It was a deathbed. Hallelujah. And that was Jesus working with her. Working with her. Author, she, he authored her faith, but he's perfecting her faith. Working with her. Working with the Word. 
working with the word and working with her through his word yeah. to get her to the place she could lay hold. Glory to God. He, he's not, he, there's no waiting on Jesus. There's no waiting or delay with him. Amen. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Yeah. But he had to work with her to lay hold of that. Yeah. Amen. The author of our faith gets us started in our walk of faith, but the finisher of our faith gets us across the finish line. Glory to God. Amen. To, to where we're able to say, there it is. Amen. Got it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, that lady's testimony has been glorious, and we give God all the praise and all the glory for it. Um, but but that, that began to happen, and that's not the uh, last time that's happened. <laughs> Now read here in Psalm 145, notice verse number, uh, let's just start in verse number 8. Verse 8, the Lord is gracious. Say that out loud, the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. And full of compassion. Full of compassion. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, if you're full of compassion, there's no room for anything else. That's right. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger, and of great mercy. Now, the word mercy and the word compassion in the Old Testament are exactly the same, same thing. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So He is full of compassion. This is uh, when it comes to faith, when it comes to receiving from the Lord, when it comes to receiving divine healing, there is really no note that can be sounded concerning the character of God that will inspire faith more than this one. Amen. That the Lord is compassionate. Amen. The Lord is merciful. Amen. 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 Uh, you know, somebody said, well, we know the Lord is able. Well, that's not going to build your faith near as much as the Lord is willing. The Lord is merciful. He, he is very merciful and compassionate and ready to heal. If you look up the word compassion, it means, this is a, this is a definition for compassion. It means to, un, uh, to uh, let's see here, I got it somewhere right in front of me. It means to, to uh, have mercy. It means to... Be full of eager yearning. Say that out loud. To be full of eager yearning. Hallelujah. And so I would say this. When you understand the compassion of God, you would almost have to say that to say that the Lord is willing to heal is almost too tame. Willing is a strong word in the New Testament. Don't misunderstand me. But when you study the compassion of the Lord and how compassion makes him full of eager yearning, it's not just, well, you know, I'm, I, I want to do that. No, it's... <laughs> he longs. Amen. In other words, he's already provided it, but for, he longs for us to lay hold. And he's willing to work with us as the author and finisher of our faith, to work with us, work with us, work with us, until our faith gets all the dross out of it, you might say. And, and, and so our faith is able to conduct the power of God like He really longs for it to be conducted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to please forgive me because I could preach myself happy tonight. So if I get real happy, you have to forgive me, all right? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've had some experiences along this line. And I'm telling you, when you, when, when you learn this flow, and I'm going to talk about this flow tonight, and you, you're used of God in it, and this isn't just for ministers. This is for uh, God's, uh, the flow of what God wants to do in people's lives wherever any of His people go. Amen. 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 We see in Jesus' ministry that many, many times, we'll look at some of this tonight, that he was moved with compassion and he healed the sick. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So Hallelujah. I'm not going to teach on faith so much tonight as I'm going to uh, minister on what, what will build your faith. Amen. Faith comes not just by knowing that he can, but knowing that he's willing Amen. and knowing that he yearns to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So Psalm 145 says he's full of compassion. 
And uh, really, this is one of the things people have to, their spirits have to lay hold of uh, in order for their faith to rise mountain high um, and to be able to draw this in and, and accept the fact that the Lord is merciful and the Lord is very compassionate. Amen. It's not really what God can do, but it's that we know He longs to do that inspires our faith. That's something that I have had to build into people sometimes. You know, they're, they're, the devil will beat you up because of your past. Right. He'll tell you because you failed this time, you failed so many times, that the Lord won't heal you. Right. And in fact, you know, the devil will hit you over the head with a big hammer about it, and then he'll get you to hit yourself over the head with a right. big hammer about right. it. Amen. And then while you're doing that, he'll take that hammer away from you and say, that one's not big enough, take this one here. Boom, yeah. boom, and just beat you up. And, and he'll help you beat yourself up right. because of your past failures. Yeah. But how many of you know that mercy and salvation is not for people that have it all figured out and have got everything just perfect in their life? Amen. 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 You know why you and I needed a Savior? It's because of, we needed a Savior. <laughs> because we, were, we had missed it. We had failed. Amen. And uh, that's what a Savior's for. And, and how many of you know He's still merciful today? He hasn't changed. If he had more mercy on you as a sinner than he will on you reaching to walk with him, well, then he's kind of mixed up. But he's not. Amen. So we need to talk about this. I had this on my heart. You're going to flow with this with me? And so in the study of the Lord's compassion, we have really a complete revelation of the Lord's willingness to heal. This willingness to heal... Is, is a good word. We need the people to know that the Lord is willing. But really, when you study compassion, you'll find out He's not only willing, He yearns to do it. He's full of eager yearning. Yeah. Amen. And so, uh, it means, uh, let, me, let me give you the full definition of compassion. To love tenderly, to pity, to show mercy, and to be full of eager yearning. Be full of eager yearning. And so... Um, you know, Brother Hagin used to tell people when he would minister to them, he would say to them, you know, he said, the Lord wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. Amen. You know, and sometimes they look at him like, well, why, then why doesn't he just do it? Well, he needs us to, to receive that. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. He needs us just to lay hold of that. Yeah. He needs us from the inside to open up like a flower in the sunshine and take that in. Yes, sir. Do you understand what I mean, like a flower in the sunshine? Yes, now, in Iowa, it's March, and in Iowa, we don't have much sunshine right now, but I was so thankful to drive to Arkansas and find out that the sun is still up there. <laughs> I saw it today. I have evidence. It's still up there. Right? And I'm telling you, in the springtime, that, 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 that sun starts shining, it starts warming up. Those flowers come out, and they just open up to the sun like a, like a flower, you know, opens up. So that's the way you need to open up to this compassion flow. Amen. Take it in, drink it in, believe it, receive it. Remember the Amen. Bible said we have known and believed the love Amen. that God has towards us. Amen. Got to know it, but you also got to believe it and you got to embrace it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so that's what it is. It's to love tenderly, have pity, show mercy, and be full of eager yearning. And so really to understand this subject correctly, you have to understand this is a divine flow. This is not... Uh, emotional. This is not somebody with shedding tears in a hospital room because they have sympathy on somebody. Sympathy says, I'm so sorry for how you hurt. Divine compassion says, I, I, I feel what you feel and here I am to do something about yes. it. Yes. And how many of you know in our human ability, we are so limited in what we can do for people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can comfort, we can console, but we can't really heal. Yes, come on. But he can. Yes, sir. And if we get into that flow of His divine love, that will flow right from Him through us into them. Amen. Hallelujah. And I've been there. I've been there. I remember one time I was, this is not, not healing, but it's, it's an illustration of this. This is way back in healing school days. We helped there, what was, I forget how many years, we helped the healing school, Kenneth Higgins Ministries, ministering there. And we had a, I never forget it one service, 
I don't know why I did it. And most of the services, whenever they were doing praise and worship, most of the time my wife's doing praise and worship in my services, I would sit in the front row. But this time, for some reason, there were some chairs up there. For some reason, I just walked up and sat down on, well, we were standing. We were praise and worship standing. And so I'm just standing up there worshiping God. And every now and then, I'd just look and, and scan the crowd a little bit, see who was there. And, of course, there was people there that I had seen before, but there's people there I hadn't seen before. And there was a particular man that he was sitting like, he was sitting like maybe the fourth row back like where this young man right here is. And I'm just, he looked as normal as everybody else. He didn't look like, you know, he was going through a hard time or anything. I mean, you just couldn't tell by looking at him that anything was going on in his life. Except every time my eyes fell on him, the something on the inside of my spirit yeah. welled up and I felt like if I yielded to it, I would burst into tears. Yeah. And I had to look away. I'm like, oh, Ooh, what was that? I, I, I mean, at the time, I knew it was God, but I wasn't, didn't have much experience with this. And so I looked away, and, you know, because I just didn't want to burst into tears. And in the process of time, you know, just, just worshiping God, uh, I looked at him again. The same thing happened. And it, it got so strong on me, and the presence of God got so strong on me, and the compassion of God welled up in me so strong that I my sermon went out the window. I didn't know what to preach. I mean, I had things ready to preach, but it all left me. I'm consumed with what God wanted to do for this man. I had no knowledge of what it was. And so being that my sermon left, I figured I better minister to him because that's all I got. <laughs> Maybe my sermon will come back if I don't obey God, you know. So, so I did. I called him out. Called him up here, and I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. Didn't have any idea, but I called him out. Now, this sounds so benign, what I said to him sounds so benign, so, I don't know, you know, general, <laughs> that, uh, you know, to me it didn't mean anything, but it came up out of my spirit, so I just said it. I laid my hands on him, and I said, it's going to turn around, don't, don't, don't be anxious or worried about it, it's going to turn around, and the Lord, the Lord will take care of this, or Amen. something like that. Yeah. Now, that's general, it just seems like, yeah. you know, okay, okay, that could fit for anybody. You know, but that's what came up. The man burst into tears, collapsed on the floor, heaving and sobbing. Well, I thought maybe I should have done this in private or something because it was, he, he really just, just felt, you know, like people say, fell apart kind of like emotionally. Well, I endeavored to draw attention away from him because I didn't want to, you know, embarrass him. But anyway, in the process of time, he got up and went back to his seat. Well, we, that was a Friday afternoon. I had, my wife and I had to go for three weeks, I believe. We had a three-week trip. No, it was a two-week trip out of town to uh, travel on the road for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and then we got back in town, but it was another week till I got back into healing school. So it was three weeks until I got back into healing school. And when I got back into healing school, preached Friday afternoon. And uh, then a man, after the service, a man came up to me and he said, hello, I'm so-and-so. He said, do you remember here, you were here three weeks ago and you ministered to a man and said so-and-so. I said, oh yeah, I remember that. He said, do you know what that was about? I said, I have no idea, no idea. He didn't, say, he didn't come up after service and talk to me. I had no idea. And he said, well, he said, uh, he's, uh, my, he's my roommate. Just, just, I don't know, a month or so ago, he moved in with him as a roommate or something like that. He said, uh, and so uh, I know all about what that was all about. I said, okay, well, I don't know anything about it. I wasn't asking, but he, did, he wanted to tell me. He said, uh, you didn't know, I guess, then, that uh, a couple of months before that I moved in to be his roommate, that he, he was, he's married, he actually still was married, but his uh, wife moved out. They had been having some marriage problems. And uh, she said, I'm done, this is it, I'm gone. Uh, they weren't divorced yet, but she was moved out. She went down, they're living in, I mean, they had been living in Tulsa, but she went down to Dallas or Fort Worth, whatever it was down there, and she moved to live down there. She said, and she took, took their little daughter. I forget how da the old daughter was like five or something like that, five, five, maybe some five years old or younger. Three years old, okay. And um, so uh, she said, uh, I'm gone, I'm out, I'm, 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 you know, this is over, whatever. I don't know the reason. I don't know whose fault it was. How many of you know it's probably everybody's fault? Yeah, <laughs> You're three sides to every story, right? 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 Yes. <laughs> His side, her side, and then the right and side. The right side. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, so I was, uh, he was telling me this, and he said uh, they moved out. And he said, but my roommate, he, he still wanted the marriage to stay together and everything, and he was praying for them. And he said, he said, then you ministered that. I said, yes. 
He said, but that's not the end of the story. I said, okay, well, tell me the rest of the story. He said, uh, you ministered that. And then he said about, I forget how long, a week later or something like that. He said he got a call from his spouse and uh, wanted to talk to him. So they started talking and she burst into tears. She said, I've been wrong. I was wrong. And he said, well, honey, you know, I, I was wrong. Am I got something on me? You're going to help me out. Thank you. And you know how that is. I was wrong. I know I was wrong. No, you were wrong. No, I was wrong. You know, <laughs> they were working that out. And this is what the wife said. She said, she said this morning, um, I got up to get whatever the daughter's name, little daughter. I got up to get her up out of the bed or crib or whatever it was. And she said, uh, normally I have to get her up. Normally I have to wake her up because she's not awake yet. And she said, but this morning I went in there and she's awake. She's standing up. I think she was in a crib still. I mean, she might have been pretty young, but she's standing up, holding onto the edge of the bed or the crib or whatever it was. And she said, uh, uh, she said to her daughter, well, honey, you're awake. She said, yeah, mommy, I've been up. She's just all chipper. And she said, Are you, how, how, how long have you been up? I've been up for a while. She said, mommy, she said, Jesus came and talked to me this morning. Wow. Yeah. Jesus came and woke me up. And, and mommy, Jesus said that daddy's praying for us, mommy. Now, I just get the compassion of God on me just saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Mommy, mommy, uh, daddy loves us, mommy. Yeah. And the mom broke yeah. and, and, and wept and repented and said, no, ha- we've God. been wrong, we've been wrong, we've been wrong. Wow. Hallelujah. I don't believe that would have happened without, right. that flow, without yielding to that flow of compassion. That's right. Are you still out there? Or are you going yes, home? We were in Finley, Ohio ministering years ago. And we were in a healing line ministering. And in the process of getting through that healing line, there was, I think it actually was kind of like that after the healing line was done. The mother brought up a child that was, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how old the child was. But it was, she said the child had stopped growing physically. I think this had been, yeah, I was going to say eight. But the child had stopped growing physically and also stopped developing in school mentally. In other words, wasn't progressing mentally. Somehow, I don't know if the brain stopped. I don't know how that all works. But somehow or another, something stopped growing in the brain or something wasn't functioning properly. And the child stopped growing physically and, and couldn't learn any further in school. And so they brought the, the child up and, uh, for us to minister to him. And I'll never forget it. Whenever the child was brought forward, something, this, 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 that's that compassion again. That compassion just welled up on the inside of me. And as I, as I yielded to that, I found myself taking that child in my arms yeah. and just weeping. Yeah. You know, I said, well, we don't weep. We have the joy of the Lord. Well, see, compassion yeah. was all over me yes, you, you, with, the, with the compassion and the love of God ministering. The, the, you know, the Bible says that he's touched with the feeling of That's our right. infirmities. That's right. And divine compassion will enable you to enter into what he's touched with. And you'll not see the justice of the situation. You'll see that God longs to change this situation. When I say you won't see the justice of it, I mean you could look and say, well, you know, praise God, whatever the reason in here, there's some cause and they need to correct this. I mean, that might all be true. But see, the love of God longs to get this, get, get this to them. And he was able to use us, and we wretch out and grabbed a hold of that child, just hold, our, hold the child in our arms, and I don't know, for a couple of minutes, just wept. Yeah. And, you know, my mind's going, no, I've got the joy of the Lord. What's going on? Because, you know, this is still kind of a new flow to me. But as I wept, the anointing just flowed into that child. I could feel it just flowing into that child, just, just, just flowing into that child. That was the last, I believe that was the last night of that series of meetings. We went, you know, other churches and so forth, went home. Within two weeks, you know, we didn't have all the communication back then we have now. But um, the pastor, for some reason, he decided to write a letter. He wrote a letter to us. And he said, I want to tell you about that child. He said, uh, they took him back, and uh, this is only two weeks later. They took him back to the doctor within the process of not long. I don't remember within that, probably, probably within a week there. But they said, uh, the doctor said, I don't know what happened, but this child has grown where it should. I, I think it had been a couple inches. And this child now is, is mentally developing. And the child in school all of a sudden was understanding again. And was able to develop again. Hallelujah. That's that flow. See, somehow or another, 
if we can yield to what God yes, longs, us, longs yes, for us to, to, to... See, we're His hands and His feet. We're the body of Christ. Amen. And now we're going to look through some verses here of Jesus when He walked the earth, how He was moved with compassion. Yeah. Let's look at some of them. Would that be all right? Yes, sir. But, uh, in fact, just look at... Uh, if you want to write them down or if you want to uh, look at them, I'm going to go a little bit quickly. Matthew chapter number 20 um, there's two blind men that said, have mercy on us, and he ministered healing to their eyes. This is Matthew 20, verses 29 through 34. And uh, Jesus healed them because they, they cried out for mercy. The same Greek word translated mercy is translated compassion. So they're asking, have compassion on us. And he, that, that, that he moved in that compassion and healed them, healed their eyes. Then notice in verse, this is in, uh, uh, let's see here, Matthew chapter number 14, verses 13 through 14. In fact, let's just go to this one. Matthew chapter number 14, and uh, verses 13 and 14. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. When the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Yes. Say it out loud. He was moved with compassion he towards them, compassion. And, with, and he healed their sick. Healed their sick. Amen. Let's just look at some of these. I believe it would be good to look at them. Mark chapter number 1, verse number 40. Mark chapter number 1, verse number 40. Jesus is ministering to a blind man. Or excuse me, excuse me, a leper man. Mark chapter 1, verse number 40 and 41. There came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him. Now get that. He's a leper. You're not supposed to touch lepers. They had a law against it. There was a quarantine. It's like a contagious disease. Don't spread this disease. But compassion will make you touch Amen. dirty, unclean Thank people. You. And he moved with compassion, and he touched him, and he said, I will be thou clean. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. That's that flow of compassion. So Jesus, whenever he was on the earth, we see from these verses that uh, he was moved with compassion on hurting humanity, and he ministered them out of the anointing of the Spirit that that compassion opened the door to step into now, that's going to be a key as we go on here. And so, uh, that's in Matthew, uh, that's in Mark chapter number 1. Now, Mark chapter number 5, we won't read all that passage, but Mark 5, you'll find the actual quote that I'm going to quote you here in verse 19. But this is when the madman of Gadara was delivered from demonic possession. He was a madman. Remember that? He was out there cutting, crying and cutting himself with stones. You remember that? And the Bible said that whenever Jesus came, he fell down and worshipped him. This man is, is full of the devil, but yet his will was to be free. You can see that. He's coming. Do I want to be free? Amen. He wanted to be free. He wanted to be free. Amen. And he came down and worshipped him. And the Bible talks about Jesus, how he ministered a lot to the story. But anyway, he cast the devils out. And, uh, and they all departed. Remember when they went into the pigs? You remember that story? Well, then the Bible says that Jesus was going to go somewhere else, but the man was clinging to him. And then, uh, well, first of all, Jesus was teaching, and the Bible said he was sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and yeah. he was sitting there listening yeah. to Jesus. And then Jesus said, I got to go. And the man said, I want to go with you. And Jesus said, this is verse 19. He said, no, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord's done for thee and has had compassion yeah. on thee. Amen. Compassion on thee. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus, and so that's, that's, that, uh, that's that case where uh, compassion was what, flowed in that case. Now, in Matthew 9, it says, verse 35, now look at this, Matthew 9, 35 through 10, 1, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Say that out loud, moved with compassion on them. Now, you can see this over and over again, can't you? He loves people. I said, he loves people. Amen. He was moved with compassion on them and he, uh, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. 
Then said he unto them, The harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, he'll send forth laborers into his harvest. And when he had called unto him his twelve, this is chapter 10, verse 1, when he had called unto him his twelve uh, disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, here's what's going on. Let me just kind of synop- give you a synopsis here. He's, he's, he's moved, notice that, he's moved with, he's, he's ministering healing and he can't get to them all. He saw the multitudes. He's moved with compassion. He said, pray that the Lord of the harvest send forth laborers into his harvest. He's asking them to come in. He's asking them to enter into what he longs to do. He longed to do so much more. Longed to, see, he's still in his physical body. Yeah. He can't be everywhere like the Spirit of God is today. Yeah. He's everywhere all the time. But Jesus back then was just in one place at one time. And he could only get to so many people. And, but he's moved. He wants to get to more people. He said, pray for laborers. Amen. Yeah. He, he asked his disciples to, get, to agree with him for laborers. And so they, they uh, and then the very next verse, they became the laborers. Yeah. He called them 12 over there and he gave them power against these, these forces of darkness. And he gave them uh, uh, the anointing to heal the sick. Amen. Yes, Why? Because of compassion. Yes, he wants to get to more people. Yes, he wants more people to get the message. Amen. He wants more people to hear what sets them free. Yes. And he said there, pray the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into his harvest. Uh, you know, you're, and, and really, he saw the multitude scattered as, as sheep without a shepherd. Uh, a shepherd is a pastor. The, the thing that he was the most moved by is they need a pastor. Right. They yes, need a pastor. Yes. In other words, they need somebody to feed them the word of God. Amen. And so he said, uh, pray the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into his harvest. But really, your pastors are a manifestation of the compassion of God on you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to say that over here because I don't know if they believe it. Your pastor is a manifestation of the compassion of God on you. Hallelujah. You, know, you go over to Hebrews. I don't, I'm going to give you this verse. I don't know if I can, uh, I don't know if I want to take time to, to look it up. But uh, Hebrews 5, 2, it says, Who can, Jesus, Jesus can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself is compassed with infirmities. Yeah. Notice that ignorance, in other words, lack of knowledge of the word. He has compassion on those who don't know the truth of what belongs to them. That's why he sends pastors to teach people. This is who you are in Christ. This is, who, this is what belongs to you in Christ. And to minister, uh, your, your pastors are a manifestation of the compassion of God to you. That's good preaching, Pastor Jay. Thank you. I think I'll keep on preaching. Amen. So, um, but Jesus did move this way over and over again. Uh, we see him moving with, in Matthew 15, 32, if you want to write it down, he's, he, he moved with compassion and he fed the 4,000. Matthew 15, 32. Mark 6, 34 through 44, he was teaching the people and he was moved with compassion and he, he fed the 5,000. All this comes out of compassion. You know, sometimes people say, well, Jesus healed to prove that he was deity. I see that he healed to prove that he loved people. That's right. yes, sir. He healed because love moved him to do it. I said, love made him do it. And so uh, these, these uh, people sometimes, they, they have these funny ideas about, you know, uh, whether it's the will of God or not to heal. Uh, if you study the scriptures, it's very plain it's the will of God to heal. But if you study the teachings of Jesus when he did heal, You'll find that the, the, the realm, Jesus took it, it, healing is in the realm of theology, but Jesus, by what he said when he healed the sick, took it totally out of the realm of theology, right. or just theology, and brought it into the realm of love. Praise God. Love heals. Amen. Amen. Now let me give you some illustrations, you might hear me say that and you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, on a number of occasions, I'm going to have, some, look at, have you look at some of these because I believe it needs to have an impact on you. Go to Luke chapter number 13. Luke 13, verse number 10, and we'll read down through verse number 17. Are you with me tonight? Yes, sir. Let's look at Luke 13, verse number 10, down through 17. He was teaching on the synagogue on, uh, 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 in one of the, 
the synagogue on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift up herself. Jesus saw her and called, him to, called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and them could therefore come and be healed, not on the Sabbath day. You remember they were, weren't supposed to work on the Sabbath day, and the ruler of the synagogue is saying, This is work. Stop this. Don't do this. Come other days and be healed. And then Jesus, look at, look at verse number 15. The Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? When he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced at the, for the glorious things which he had done, done by him. Amen. Now, Notice, I want you to see, when, they, when Jesus said, not today, I mean, the uh, Pharisees said, not today, or the ruler of the synagogue, this, other days, and Jesus said, if you have, notice what he said here. He said, and he used this illustration a number of times, if you have an ox or an ass that uh, is thirsty and it's on the Sabbath day, won't you unloose it from the stall and take it out to get a drink? Yeah. And he said, ought not this woman? In other words, he's saying, you'll have compassion on a thirsty animal, yeah. but you won't have compassion on, a, on, a, in, on a, a woman that's bound by a spirit of infirmity. Yeah. He's basically saying, a woman or a human being is more valuable Amen. than an animal. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll, you'll have compassion on an animal. See, he's taking it out of the realm of theology and yeah. bringing it into the realm of compassion. Amen. Can't you see that? And this isn't the only time he did it. If I count right, he did it like four, or said it. He said it like four times. You can go, I'll just make reference to some of the other ones. Luke 14, the man with the dropsy was healed. And he used this illustration. He said, you'll have an ox or an ass. And if it falls into the ditch on the Sabbath, won't you pull it out? That's another case where he said it. Then Matthew 12 and uh, uh, Matthew 12, 9 through 14 uh, is Matthew's account. That where the man with the withers ha withered hand was healed. Yeah. And uh, they accused him of healing on the Sabbath. And he said the same thing. He said, uh, if an animal's thirsty, won't you take it, uh, uh, you know, and, and get it something to drink? Or if it falls in the ditch, you know, yeah. won't you get it out on the Sabbath day? He's, he's basically saying, and then the NIV says in Matthew 12, how much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Weymouth, is not a man, however, worth more than a sheep? Good speed, how much more a man is worth than a sheep? Amen. Amen. Now, in Mark's account of that same man with the withered hand, are you still following me tonight? I'm going over a lot, but Mark 3, 1 through 6, in that account, the Bible says that he, he said, he, he looked around, he saw the man with the withered hand, he said, stand up, please. And the man stood up and he looked around at all the, the religious people who were, they got fire in their eyes. If you heal today, you're, you're a lawbreaker. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 they're wanting to you know, tell him to stop. And, right. uh, but he had this man stand up and he said uh, to all the crowd, he said, is it, is it lawful to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath day? And they didn't know what, they didn't know what to say because right. they knew as soon as they said something, they'd say the wrong thing. Yeah. So they just held their peace, and Jesus took the man and healed him. Yeah. And look, look at what it says. This is, in the, uh, this is in the Taylor translation. He looked about the, uh, uh, on them. The, the Taylor translation says, deeply disturbed by their indifference to human needs. Yeah. Wow. Are you still out there? Yes, You're going sir. home. Yeah, we're here. Deeply disturbed by their indifference to human needs. So... That's verse number five in the Taylor translation. So he's basically saying humans that, have, that are sick have a need. Yeah. And I have compassion on hurting humanity. Amen. Yes, sir. That's taking it out of the realm of theology, which the healing is in the realm of theology. It's, it's, it's doctrinal. It's basic. It's, right. You know what I'm talking about? It's, it's Bible doctrine. Amen. It's sound. It's, and so forth. And we can prove that. But Jesus here is taking it out of the realm of theology. Yeah. into the realm of compassion. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question just to drive this point home. I use this illustration sometimes. It's been coming back to me lately. Let's say you and I are neighbors and, and uh, you're going on vacation in maybe a week or 10 days and you say, we're going on vacation. And let's say we're, we're friends and we know each other and you trust us and you say, could you, could you uh, kind of watch the house while we're gone? You know, whatever. We've got to maybe things take care of on the inside and then you got a dog and 
he needs fed and all that. So, oh, yeah, we'll do that. So when do you want him fed and so forth? And, yeah, we'll take care of it. He'll be fine. Okay, all right. So you take your vacation. And then, let's say I'm feeding your dog. And uh, let's say he's on one of the, he's in the backyard. He's an outdoor dog. And he's got a dog house. But he's also got one of those, I don't know if you've ever seen those chains that they string them from post to tree or whatever. And they can run back and forth on that, you know. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Okay. And so that, let's say I'm, I'm feeding the dog morning and evening or whatever. And I'm on the third day and I go back there and the dog's tangled up in its chain and it's kind of choking. And then I say, well, you know, and I feed the dog. I put the food out for the dog. And I come back the next morning and he's still tangled up in his chain. And uh, I put more food out for him. Don't do anything for him. And I come out the next evening and he's, di he's died. He's choked himself. I know it's, it's not yeah. fun to think about, but it's, an, it's a good illustration. Just hold on. Whenever, whenever you come home, maybe you come home and I greet you in the front yard. How you doing? Good. How's everything? Fine. You get to the backyard and the dog's tied up. I mean, you know, choked himself. And you come over, well, what happened? Well, you said, what if I said, well, let, let's say you said, well, didn't you see? The, yeah, I saw it. Well, did you try to help it? I mean, what happened? No, I didn't, I didn't do anything to help it. Yeah. Why didn't you do anything to help it? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't sure if it was God's will or not. Yeah. All right. Come on. Huh? Yeah. We don't act that way when it comes to those kinds of things. No. I said we don't act that way when it comes to those kinds of things. That's, right. That's good. Why do we act that way when it comes to seek healing of sickness and disease? Amen. We act like, well, you just don't know if it's God's will. When you understand the flow of divine compassion, Amen. you know it's always, always God's always, will. Always. always God's will. Always. Say always. Because it's always God's will. Amen. Always God's will. Now, if you think it's not God's will for some to be healed, then why are you taking them to the hospital to get them out of God's will? Right, right, right. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Are you more compassionate than Jesus? No. See, people say, well, we're going to take them. We don't want them to be hurting like this. We're going to take them and, and help them, you know, get them medication, whatever. And, uh, and, and rightly so. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's something better. There's divine healing. But I'm saying whatever. Let's, whatever. Help people. Help people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because we, we, God, God wants some help. He wants them well. Amen. And so um, to say that, you know, to take them to the hospital to get them well and then to say, we don't know if it's the will of God, is to say, we have more mercy than Jesus has on them. Yeah. We're more yeah. compassionate than he is on That's them. That's right. That doesn't sound sound to me. Does it no. sound sound to you? No, sir. Any mercy or compassion you have, you got it from God. That's right. Amen. And you're not flowing in near as much as he is. That's right. Yes, Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to amen myself. Glory to God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, amen, amen, amen. amen. And so then another case is in Luke 7, whenever Jesus came to a city, I think it's the city called Nain, he's gone into the city, and when he's gone in, there's a funeral procession coming out of the city. That's right. And there was a widow woman that was burying her only son. Okay, you got a widow woman, that means she doesn't have a husband. Her husband died, and this is her only son. So she now has nobody to take care of her. You can see the setting, how that, word, how that wording is stated there. A widow woman, and she's burying her only son. Now... It says that Jesus was moved with compassion. This is Luke 7, verse 13. It says he was moved with compassion on her. That's right. Say her. her. What does that mean, he's moved with compassion on her? Huh? That means here's a woman that has no more support financially. Yeah. You know, it's a different day back then. You know, today ladies can work, we understand that, and we're fine with that, but, um, you know, but the Lord saw her and had compassion on her, because in this day, she no longer has any, anybody to bring home the bacon, so to speak, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and so, he, what did compassion for her do? It caused him to move and minister in that situation, yeah. yes. and raise that, raise that, uh, that young man up. Yeah. Why? so that she wouldn't be alone. That's right. I'm telling you, that's the, you know, you, you think about that story I told you about in healing school where that young girl had that, where Jesus came and, 
and ministered and, and, and spoke to that young girl. He, he, Jesus was dealing with the situation through that young girl. Amen. You know what that was when that compassion? Now, I didn't know. It's not. See, this compassion that I flowed in that, in that healing school service towards that man when I knew nothing of what was going on in his life, it couldn't have been my emotions or my mind because my mind didn't know what it was. Yeah, right. So it wasn't me. It wasn't human. But it was what the Lord knew about his situation. And I'll tell you what it was. It was compassion on the marriage, yeah. But it was compassion on that little girl. That's right. Amen. That's right. He didn't want that little girl growing up without a mommy and a daddy. Amen. You know, Amen. or just a mom or whatever. You don't have to go from one house. Now, I'm not, being, I'm not condemning anybody for that. I'm just simply saying the Lord has compassion on children so they Amen. don't have to do that. And we ought to, how many of you know as married couples, we ought to make it work for the kids. If nothing else, just make it work for the kids' sake. Well, that went over like a di different than I intended it to, but it's, it's the truth. <laughs> I'll just move on and let the pastors deal with the rest of that. <laughs> Amen. Jesus used this same terminology when it came to having compassion on hurting animals and how we're more valuable than animals. In Matthew 6, when he talks about the Lord takes care of the birds, won't he take care of you? Amen. Amen. Now, here's what I want you to see. Now, this is Jesus in his earthly ministry. We looked at Jesus in his earthly ministry. We looked at Jesus' uh, teachings about why he was ministering to the sick. No, it wasn't just because I'm theologically supposed to do this. It's because of his love and compassion on hurting humanity. And so we looked at that. But now, okay, Jesus isn't here anymore. I mean, in the flesh, I mean. But how many of you remember it says over in Hebrews, in fact, let's go turn to this, Hebrews chapter number 4, let's look at Hebrews 4, uh, uh, this passage will bring this into today. Hebrews chapter number 4, and uh, let's look at verse number, well, we'll start, I want to get to one verse here, but let's back up and look at verse number, uh, uh Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, this verse makes no reference to Jesus when he walked the earth in his physical body. Right. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This verse is talking about Jesus today as our high priest at the right hand of the throne of God. This is not Jesus when he walked the earth. Now, now he was this way when he walked the earth. But he still, what this verse is saying is, just like he was compassionate when he walked this earth, he's still the same today. Amen. He's touched. That's where, that word touched with the feeling of, if you look it up in the Greek, it is from one word, well, it's from two words, to have, and then second word, compassion. He, he, is, he is still a compassionate high priest. Just like he was when he walked the earth, he is still the same today. He hasn't changed. You ever read that? Hebrews, Hebrews talks about the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. No wonder Jesus said it's expedient for you that I go away. Because he can only be at one place at one time. Yes. Isn't that right? Amen. Now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest for us all. Amen. Amen. And we, as we said, he still, the definition of, of, of compassion means to love tenderly, pity, to, be, to have pity, to show mercy, and be full of eager yearning. He's still that way today. He Amen. still is, is, has pity, he has mercy, and loves tenderly. Amen. No wonder when my spiritual son saw him, he's got tears That's streaming right. down his eyes. He said, I long to do so That's much right. more. I long to do so much Amen. more. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He's still the same. I said, he's still the same. He's at the right hand of the Father, and his earthly ministry has ceased. But today, he's still the, he's, he's taken on a new ministry. He's the apostle and high priest of our confession. Amen. He's at the right hand of the Father. And uh, just like we read in the Gospels, he's no different today. 
He, he still carries on his ministry of compassion. But listen to this. He does it through us now, his body. Yes, glory Amen. To God. And he'll move on us. And that compassion yes. will well up in us yeah. towards people. Because he still longs to be there in the flesh and touch them. And he says, I want you to touch them. I want you to minister healing. I want you to let me flow through you. Because you're my hands and you're my feet. And it's still the same. He's still the same God. We're laborers together with God. Amen. And so as we yield to this compassion that rises up within us and that love that comes up within us and let that love move us to action, then that love will flow through us and meet the need of hurting humanity as if Jesus was here in the flesh. Amen. You start reading Acts chapter, number, uh, Acts chapter number 1, verse number 1. It says, all that Jesus began right. to do and to teach. Yes, sir. And he goes on and writes the book of Acts, meaning Jesus isn't done because the Gospels have do, are done. Amen. Jesus in the book of Acts is going to continue. Glory Jesus God. didn't finish. Whenever Jesus left, Hallelujah. whenever he left, it wasn't finished. He's just getting something started. Hallelujah. He's just getting the church age going to where he's able to do the same thing he did in the flesh through anybody who will yield to him and let it flow through him. Hallelujah. And so we're to be the ones that flow in this compassion towards hurting humanity today. We need to not be like the, remember the, 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 the Good Samaritan story? We need not be like the, the ones that pass by on the other side. Yeah. You remember that story? We need to be the ones that go over here and, and see how the love of God lo fl loves through us and Glory flows God. through us. Glory God. I'm telling you, this is the doorway. In fact, this is a launching pad into the spirit where, a room is, where you can get into a room of the miraculous. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so um, how often have we wanted something to happen, but nothing really ever did happen until somehow or another we were able to yield to that love that's flowing out of us. It's not going to be you that did it when you yield to this love. Now, you can yield to this love and minister healing. You can yield to this love and give somebody the need, financially something they need. You can yield to this love and pray. In fact, in Romans 8, 26 and 27, it talks about the Spirit helping our infirmities. Remember right. that? Right. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. We know not what for to pray for as we ought, but the same the anointing helps us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And we can pray out the will of God. Other translations say the yearnings. Other ones say longings. Yearnings, groanings, longings. These are born, they find, they, this longing is born out of the love of God. This is not something we get down, we're going to get down and groan right now. No, you're going to get down and say, God, the love in me that you have for them gives, means I've got to pray for them right now. There are times to lay hands on people, there's times to pray. The compassion will move through you different ways. I'm telling you, this, this, flow of, uh, this flow of compassion in prayer is changing our church right now. Amen. This, has begun, this is why this has begun to happen in our services. Yeah. We've got people that are starting to tap in to that yearning that's down on the inside. Yes, for God wants to do yes, more for people. He wants Amen. to do more. And more and more of our congregation is getting a hold of this right now. Amen. And they're, they're letting that flow through them. They're giving expression to it in prayer. And they're praying out miracles. Amen. We had another situation just recently. Jesus again came, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to say he's ever going to do it again. This way. I mean, compassion, yes, right. but this way. I don't know if this will ever happen again, but this has been something that's been happening. Uh, Jesus came and stood by me, and he said, I want you to, this was in the, I was getting ready on Sunday morning in the restroom, getting ready to go to church. And he came, and he stood by me, and he said, I want to talk to you. He said, so-and-so, and he started talking to me about so-and-so. I'm not going to get into the details right now. It's not, not proper to do it. But, but he started talking to me. And, and he started talking to me about somebody that I thought, how should I say this? They, they, they were in a bad situation, yeah. Pastor Michelle. And it, was, it, it wasn't because it, it, it was brought on by their own doing. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And so I sort of thought because they're, they're really pretty unfaithful, you know, my attitude, I'm not proud of this. I'm just telling you. But my attitude toward them was, well, of course. Right. I don't know if you've ever done that, Pastor. I'm not going to accuse you of ever doing that. But I've been there before. Guilty. 
what, what can you expect? I mean, you're not faithful, you don't get the word, and you know, you, now you're under attack, of course. That was my attitude. But Jesus came and stood by me in the restroom and started talking to me, and the compassion of God started welling up Amen. on the inside of me. And I started, and, and he said, I want you to talk to him when you get to church on Sunday. I want you to minister this to him. And I called them out. I, I just weep thinking about it. They changed just like that. Amen. Jesus once again came and stood beside them and walked with them from that auditorium. And that, 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 that couple has been different ever since. And they are walking right, he's walking them right into their, their, their deliverance from this a situation I won't get into. I, I, he loves people you give up on. Hallelujah. Dr. Dufresne used to say, he said, in this move of God, in this era, he said, you're going to see people healed that you wouldn't have healed. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, Jesus, when he stood by me in that restroom and he started talking to me about this person, he, he saw them, he saw their heart. He saw something I didn't see. And boy, I'm telling you what, what was really in their heart came out and everybody could see it. And we're like, whoa, this is awesome. It wasn't because of my sympathy. I'm kind of all, well, of course, puffed up and, you know, you know, I mean, I didn't say it, but it's like if you were like me, you wouldn't be going through this. I'm not proud of that. But I'm just simply saying the Lord is full of compassion, full of mercy. And we've begun to see this and begun to see this. This is starting to happen. It's, it's not every Sunday now, but, but another situation just a couple of Sundays ago completely transformed a, another individual. Just completely uh, delivered them in a moment because this compassion, I'm, I'm, I'm up in the pulpit again, and this compassion just goes out to them. I said, Lord, I, I kept saying to myself in my, in my head, I kept saying, I don't want to embarrass them. I don't want to embarrass them. If I call them out, I don't want to embarrass them. And I kept getting that prompting, that love. Jesus wanted to minister to them. Amen. Come on, sir. And so I yielded to it. I, I won't go into the details because it's, <laughs> there's just yeah. some things I wish I could say, but I can't. Yeah. But it just transformed a person's life. Amen. The compassion of God Praise did. You God. understand who it is. It's certainly not me. And so when, when, when we understand this, I want to finish up tonight. I don't know how long I've been preaching. I, you took the clock down in the back or you don't have one or something. I have no idea how, how long have I been preaching. I should have checked my watch. But we'll be out of here before 1 a.m., all right? <laughs> no, I won't. But Brother Hagin said... There was a situation years ago with his wife, Miss Aretha. She had a goiter. Remember that? Um, and he said this thing was causing choking spells in the middle of the night. But he and Miss Aretha had never talked about it because, or, or talked about going and getting it operated on because um, he said he found out later that she had the same thing in her spirit that he had in his spirit. That if she had an operation, she would die on the operating table. Well, nobody wants to go for that, so, you know, we'll just, we won't go to the operating table. But so, but Brother Hagin started praying because he said Miss Aretha was waking up in the middle of the night with choking spells, trying to get her breath because this thing's choking off her windpipe. And boy, that just, that just did something to him. And he pulled away and started praying. And he said, uh, he got over into the spirit about it. And he said he talked it over with Jesus, and Jesus said, uh, he, he prayed it out. And, and he said, I need her. Remember that? I don't know if you remember that story. I need her. Uh, she's such a help to me and so forth. And so he said, uh, he got over the spirit and Jesus started talking to him about it. I don't, I don't remember. I don't think it was a vision that time. But he said he started talking to him and he said, uh, tell her to go ahead. Just, uh, just go ahead and have, her to have it operated on. He said, um, because uh, I'll, I'll work with the doctors and she won't die just because you asked me. Just because you asked me. He said, I long to do so much more for my yes, children, sir. but they don't ask yes, me. Sir. That's his compassion. Yeah. Do you hear that? I long. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. He's full <laughs> of eager yearning. Yes. Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible Hallelujah. says his eyes run to and fro through the whole earth. That's right. That's he's looking. He wants to be, he wants to be yes. able to. Somebody said, well, why didn't he just do it? He's got to have us open the door to him. Amen. And that's a whole other subject. 
Well, did you get anything out of the word tonight? Yes, this flow, this flow can move you to prayer. Amen. If I could wrap this up a little bit tonight, is that all right? Yes, Brother Hagin made this statement. He said he wrote it down back in December 1st, 1941. The Lord gave him the secret to his ministry. He didn't share much about it until years later. But he said, this is what the Lord gave him. The secret to a successful apostolic ministry full of faith and power using the divine given instruments of travail and compassion will make you irresistible. Now that's more than I have time to get into right now to explain all that. But I want you to notice that God's given us some tools to get the job done. Divinely given instruments of travail and compassion. Like a, you know, a barber, he needs certain tools. Or a mechanic, he needs certain tools. As, as children of God, to get the job done, get the harvest reaped, he's given us some tools. Praise God. There's several of them. But the, the, the mentioned here is travail and compassion. You realize that we, this is something the Lord's been telling me lately. He said, you're not going to teach the harvest in. You understand what that means? That means you're going to have to move in the Holy Ghost. You won't get the job done just teaching the people. Now, I'm not preaching against that. Here I am doing it. Right? But you understand what I'm talking about. It's got to be more than that. We've got to yield to this travail. We've got to yield to this compassion. We've got to yield to the flow of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, this kind of praying will uh, get us over into this flow. There's more than just, I'm, not, I'm not just not talking about just praying in our understanding, though that's scriptural too, but I'm talking about yielding to these yearnings and these longings. Romans 8, 26, 27 is what, what it's all about. He, uh, he's talking about the Holy Ghost helping us, helping us. I've seen people go down to, like I've just shared with you, uh, down to death's door, but, but this, this move of compassion, this move of prayer uh, uh, that, that makes a supply available Amen. to them. Remember James chapter 5, verse 14, 15, verse 16, actually. Tremendous power available, the Amplified Amen. says. Amen. I've been there whenever it just seemed like nothing was going the right direction, but you get over into this travail and, and flow in, in the, these yearnings of the Spirit and expressing what He's longing and, and so forth to, to do in somebody's life. And you get that prayed out and the thing turned just like Amen. that. I've been there. Amen. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, I want it more. Or I'm, I'm a junkie. Amen. <laughs> Can you say amen? You know what I'm talking about? Praise the Lord. Listen to this, and then I'll wrap this up. 1 Corinthians 14.1. You know, this is 1 Corinthians 14.1 is the very next verse right after the love chapter, right? 1 Corinthians 13. Everybody know the love chapter? Every husband in here say amen. Every wife say amen. Amen. That was a little weak there on the second one, but anyway. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, I'm just having fun. I'm, 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 I'm just kidding, really. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 is the love chapter. We all, it talks all about love, and then it ends up faith. Now by his faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Then it says, how many of you know Paul didn't write in chapter and verse? He keeps on going. Follow then, fo follow after charity, chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity, that's love, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Now listen to this. This is the Phillips translation. Follow then the way of love while you set your heart on the gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> Why do I want to be using the gifts of the Spirit? So I can be a big wig, have a big name. Everybody knows me. Woo, boy, he's got power. No, 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 no. What are the gifts of the Spirit for? To profit all. To profit people. To benefit them. To help them. Amen. And he said, this is the, listen to that. Follow then the way of the love while you set your heart on the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Well, that'd be all these things, all the things the Holy Ghost does, but that would include healing and the power of God to administer healing. But, but see, he's telling us the doorway into that. He's telling us there's a door you can go through to get into that flow. Amen. Amen. And it's not so I can be seen or I can be known or I, whatever, you know, fleshly carnal ambition or something like that. It's to minister to people, help hurting people. Amen. Love them. Just love them. If you want the gifts of the Spirit, love people. Amen. Love people. Amen. Amen. 
He's connecting the move of the Spirit, uh, you know, in these nine manifestations of the Holy Ghost. He's connecting that to this flow of compassion. Amen. This is a doorway right into it. Or you could say it another way, it's like a launching pad where you can, get, you can launch above your natural sympathy and get over into something divine. Sympathy will say, I wish I could do more for you, but all I have is this. But divine compassion will that tap into what God can do. And I'm telling you, He can fix situations like some of these stories I've told. He can fix situations that no human being can fix. I mean, He can change people's hearts like that wife that moved out. I told you that story. He can, change. He can help people. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Glory be to God. Glory well, did you get anything out of that tonight? Yes, I want to get into more of this about, the, about, the, about prayer because that's really, really, really what's stirring in my spirit. But uh, we'll see how the Lord leads us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the love of Glory God. God. Thank God for divine compassion. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Lord Jesus. Thank you. Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you're full of compassion. And you have tender mercies on people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. The Bible calls, uh, Paul called uh, Jesus, uh, God, really, uh, in, what is it? I'll just look it up, one of the Corinthian books. He says, he's the Father, God is the Father of mercies, plural. Not just one mercy, but mercies plural. <laughs> yeah. We think of mercy, and rightly so, but we think of mercy on forgiving the sinner. That's mercy. Amen. I mean, if you're going to get anything, get that one. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Isn't that right? But he's not the father of mercy, singular. He's the father of mercies, plural. Amen. Amen. Bible calls him in Ephesians 2, rich in mercy. He's rich in mercy. In other words, when it comes to the mercy department, he's loaded. He's loaded with it. Amen. Just absolutely loaded with it. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm interested in this. Are you interested in this flow? I believe it's one of the keys to this era. Tapping into this, letting this flow through us. Amen. I know that story. You ever heard that story? John G. Lake, he was ministering over there in South Africa, had that great move of God. And uh, what, back in the early 1900s. And he said there was a, and it, you know, the, the, the move of God became widespread over there. And there was a dignitary, uh, one of the dignitary's wives who was eaten up with cancer that, uh, Brother uh, John G. Lake was ministering to, and you know whether she needed to do this or not, whatever. But she decided, she, she, in her mind, she thought that I have, to, in order to trust Jesus, I have to come off all the medications the doctor have have me on for pain. You don't have to do that. Right. How many of you know your faith is not is not in not having medication. Yeah. Your faith is in Jesus. But in her mind, that was what she had to do to trust Jesus. I'm not saying that anybody has to do that. But, I mean, you can trust Jesus while you're on your medication. Praise God. I mean, I've been in pain before. I don't like it. I'll do whatever I need to to get rid of it while I'm building my faith and laying hold of my healing, you know. But her mind, she needed to come off of this medication. And, and John G. Lake was ministering to her and so forth. And uh, he, was, he was there day and night. She was just in terrible pain. And, uh, but he, he needed to go home and change his clothes and come back. He said on his way back, he heard the screams of that woman, her pain was causing her to cry out with screams of pain. And he said, I don't know what, a couple blocks away or something, he heard that woman scream. And he said, somehow or another, the compassion of yeah. God rose up on the yeah. inside of him. And he said, rather than walk the rest of the way, he found himself running the rest of the yeah. way. And he got into the room. She's there in the bed, emaciated. And he said, he got into the room, and just with that compassion all over him, he just grabbed her and, and wrapped his arms around her and began to weep. Yes. And he said, while he held her, and wept over her. He said she stopped, you know, screaming and out in pain. And she was completely healed. Amen. Praise God. He had been ministering to her for days or whatever it was. But somehow or another, he said, somehow or another, the compassion of Jesus that was there all along broke through. Amen. Talking about broke through him. <laughs> Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Other people might give up on you, but Jesus never will. He won't give up on you. Praise. He's merciful. And His mercies are new every morning. You might, you might say, I used up all the mercy there was for me yesterday. Yeah, and there's a brand new batch for you this morning. Brand new batch for you this morning. That's what God was doing last night. He was cooking up more mercies while you were sleeping. <laughs> Glory! Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you. I preach myself happy. Glory to God. I'm just checking my spirit. See if there's anything else the Holy Ghost wants to do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands one more time. Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your great mercy on the sick. Hallelujah. We give you praise in Jesus' name. I just don't seem to have anything else, but, but I will say we'll be ministering to the sick some point here in these, in these meetings. I don't know. Maybe Pastor Debbie might minister while she's ministering. We'll see how the Lord leads us. Amen. But if you can't be back any other services and you want hands laid on you, then we'll, then we'll do that tonight. Make your way forward and we'll minister to you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise Amen. The Praise the Lord. All right. Come on up, sweetie. Thank you, Jesus. Great are you, Lord, greatly to be praised, merciful and righteous in all your ways. You are high and lifted up. You're the God, God who's, who's more Lord. than us. You are a good God. And great are you, Lord. Go Hallelujah. ahead and come up and uh, Help we're going to minister to you. Thank you, Jesus. We'll minister. Great Go ahead are and you, Lord. And greatly, greatly to, to be, be praised. praised. Merciful oh, and, and righteous right. in oh, all your ways. Way. You are high and lifted up. You're the God who's more than enough. And yes, great Lord. are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for these precious people that have come tonight. Thank you for your great compassion on them and every need they have. As we come before them, we yield ourselves to you to flow through us and minister to their need. We lay our hands on our sister in the name of Jesus to minister your healing power to her. We give you praise, Father. As the power flows into her, she opens up to receive it because it's hers. It's her gift. It's your love towards her. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Is this for him? Yes. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on this young man's lungs. I curse that condition that causes this infection, causes this condition in Jesus' Thank name. You. Father, I minister your power to him out of the love that you put in us. We thank you. Love heals. And your healing power flows into his body right this moment and drives that out to never return again. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We lay our hands on you, sister, under the anointing of the Spirit of God to impart unto you. Oh, there. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Satan, you take your hands off of her. I bind you now to come out. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for her healing. We thank you for her freedom. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on forward. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your mercy and compassion on our sister. We lay our hands on her body. 
We command every bone, every joint, every, every tendon, every tissue, every fiber of her being to line up and be normal as is designed to function in Jesus' name. Take your hands off her body. I command her body to be normal and healed, straight and strong, delivered from pain, sickness, infirmity, conditions that were there for years. In Jesus' name, this is the end of it. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> take that. That's yours. Take it. Just take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Take it all. Take it all. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shakalamaya. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Great are you, Lord. And greatly to be praised. Sing it with me. You're merciful and righteous in all your ways. You are high and lifted up. You're the God who's more than enough. You are a good God. And great are you. Sing it with me again, one more time. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. You're merciful and righteous in all your ways. You are high and lifted up. You're the God who's more than enough. You are a good God, and great are you, Lord. You are a merciful God. Yes, you are. Thank you, Jesus. You are a loving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody right back in here, you have a, a loved one. It's a, it's a child. I can see them in the spirit. They're not young. They're, 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 a, and they're an adult. Maybe not very old, but they're an adult. And they've been away from the family. They've been out of fellowship with you as the family. And they've been out of fellowship with God. But the spirit of God is moving on that situation. And they're going to make contact with you. And they're going to get back in fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus. I see it in the Spirit. I speak out what I see. Father, we believe we receive that. Whoever that is, whoever needs that, Father, we receive that together with them by faith. We thank you for it. It'll happen just like you said. Hallelujah. Because you are merciful and you are compassionate. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You tell us about it. We want to hear about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just making sure we don't want to get done. We don't want to st stop before the Lord's done, right? Glory to God. Thank Him one more time. Lift your voice and thank Him one more time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your Spirit. Thank you for moving by your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is it for healing? I lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus, and I release God's power in, in His merciful flow of healing into your body to correct, to restore, to bring to normal, to cause to be as it should be in your body, in your body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.